2024 CR 28, Victoria Lorraine Williams now appears at a, uh, a court security monitored Zoom location at the Butler County Judicial Center. Ms. Williams, you are late. Sorry, there was a couple of people in front of me with walkers that he was having to scan and all of that with the metal thingy. You couldn't have arrived a few minutes early to make sure you got checked in and in place by your scheduled time? Sorry, Your Honor. I thought three minutes was enough. I'm sorry. Before the court at this time for further hearing in regards to warrant to, uh, warrant to show cause alleging certain probation failing to submit to random but reasonable urinalysis as directed. As alleged by Ryan Smith, the supervising court services officer who is present on this meeting with us. What are your client's uh, uh, desires regarding these allegations, Mr. Favre? Your Honor, in regards to the allegations, Ms. Williams will stipulate and waive for right to an evidentiary hearing. All right. Ms. Williams, your attorney has made an announcement. That you now intend to waive any due process hearing that you'd otherwise be entitled to, where the state would have the obligation of proving these allegations by preponderance of the evidence. You can challenge the state's evidence with the assistance of your lawyer, Joseph Favre, present your own evidence, confront the state's witnesses unless good cause was shown, and among other lesser remedies, the court could consider an outright revocation of your probation and having you serve the remaining balance of your sentence locked up. Do you understand these things? Yes, sir. Starting Honor. with Amber Norris on behalf of the state of Kansas. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, defendant has been on probation as of March 11th of this year, uh, being supervised by court services. Um, Your Honor, I did have opportunity, uh, obviously, to read the warrant and then also the request for um, revocation that uh, Mr. Smith provided. And, Your Honor, it, it seems that um, he's basically, I think, been having problems from the beginning. Uh, the reporting, um, either rescheduling, being late, uh, is seems to be a bit of an issue. And then uh, she, she was to have an evaluation in a certain period of time, and she basically lied to her court services officer not once but twice as Mr. Smith uh, made some requests and um, she had multiple excuses why it was that she could not provide a UA at the time that he made the, the request, which made sense after the not scheduling the appointments uh, or not scheduling the evaluations and lying to Mr. Smith about them uh, seemed, you know, rather suspicious. Um, I, I, not sure how successful she's going to be able to be on probation if she can't report um, in a timely manner. But really, I think probably her biggest issue is it doesn't seem like she can be honest with Mr. Smith or whoever is supervising her and follow their their instruction. So that that's certainly going to make it hard for her to be successful and complete uh, probation. Um, her underlying sentence if she's not going to be compliant with probation. I'm not sure where, where else we can we can go at this point. And well, I don't have any further recommendations for the court. And I don't believe the court would need to address well since it's, it was pled as a misdemeanor, I don't believe this court needs to address additional attorney's fees. Very well, Ms. Norris. I want to make sure that the defense has an opportunity to respond to any statements made essentially in support of uh, sanctioning in this case. So I want to address Ryan Smith, the court services officer at this time. I think that you made your position known in the paperwork that you filed with the court, essentially that this may be a case for consideration of an outright revocation, Mr. Smith. But has there been any change in this defendant's performance on probation after you filed this warrant to show cause, which perhaps put and we kind of made a deal that I may change my recommendations if she would show me um, that she is going to be successful. Um, I don't have anything at all. I haven't spoken to her since uh, that date, showing that she's scheduled an evaluation, completed an evaluation. 
made a payment on her case. Uh, I don't know if she's clean or sober. So, Your Honor, based on our last conversation and no proof of anything, my position has not changed. Very well, Mr. Smith. Mr. Favre, your recommendations to the court? Judge, um, we are asking the court consider giving Ms. Uh, Williams a sanction here. Ms. Williams has obviously had a rough start to her probation. There's no doubt of that. It's been outlined very well by, by Mr. Smith. Um, she informs me that she has gotten her drug and alcohol scheduled. She did not give me the specific details of that care worker. In addition to being to working other odd jobs where she does construction and other rehabilitation type work. Um, we asked the court to consider giving her a little bit more time to get this right. It is her first time up on probation violation here. And um, I think she, she does have a job where she takes care of an elderly gentleman is one of her duties. And he has an appointment on the 31st of July that she has coverage until that time, but, but she would like to be able to be released by then to take him to his appointment in Kansas city and, and uh, do the things she needs to do to keep employed. So that would be our request at this time. Very well. At this time, the court will address the defendant, Victoria Lorraine Williams, and I'll ask her personally. Does she have any statements that she wishes to make in mitigation of punishment here or anything further that she would like to present to the court? Um, yes, Your Honor. I do ask. Um, I did get a rough start to my probation. I'm, it was a lot going on, and I don't have – there's no excuse in the world I can make for screwing up. I mean, it's – I did it. I'll be the first to admit it. But it's like I asked Ryan, please – Allow me another opportunity to prove myself that I can do this, that I will do this. It's, I don't have a choice. I have too much riding and too many people depending on me right now to be screwing up and doing this stupid shit. Pardon my French, Your Honor. <laughs> who Who is depending on you? Um, both my daughters. Um, One just had a second baby. I babysit her. Both my daughter's kids while they work. Um. I reside with Curtis Westbrook. Um, he's got congestive heart failure and he's got uh, seven years. He's got it in his liver and his heart. So he's not looking at long. I just don't. I can't turn my back on him and I don't want to leave him high and dry. So I'd ask the courts to please consider that when making their decision. Very well, Ms. Williams. When one looks at the sentencing journal entry in this case, I suppose you could construe it to be a sentence for probation. And that's essentially one of the orders that the court made. But Ms. Williams, really what the, the sentencing order was was six months in the county jail. I know you are given the opportunity for an alternative to actually serving that six months in the county jail by completing probation and its requirements. Therefore, this court specifically ordered that you had to have your drug and alcohol evaluation completed within 60 days. So you didn't take that seriously at all. You did get it scheduled within 60 days. You haven't started with any type of therapy or counseling or educational program because you don't even have your assessment done yet, and yet we're past four months from your sentencing date, and you still haven't done it. But today you come in and say, well, I've at least scheduled it now. Well, it's a little bit too a uh, little, a little bit too late, Ms. Williams, because here's the thing. Either you choose to do the probation or you choose to do the jail time. It's not the court's decision here. Not really. It was yours. You had full control over whether you stayed in the community or not. You just said, I'm just going to blow this off and I'll get away with it. I think you were confident that you could just not do any I, report. I was, I did report. That's about, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm, I've been under so much stress and so much hanging over me and I just, I kind of gave up for a minute. I really did. But it's, I got my job back. I got going back in the good graces with my kids. I get to watch my grandbabies now. Yeah, I made the 
drug and alcohol evaluation. Yeah, but it's like you said, maybe it is too little, too late. But all I can say is at least I'm trying now. At least I'm putting one foot forward to get it done and get it done correctly. Why did it take a probation revocation proceeding to make that happen in your own mind? You did not take this court sentencing orders seriously enough? I, it's like I said, I had given up. I mean, there was just so much hanging on me and over me that I gave up. I really did. But then I got my bounce back and I'm trying. I'm getting everything legally dealt with and I'm back. I got my job. I'm going I can I can do this. I really can. I got my I just wish I you were to show now. this work and your probation officer that you could. What? And that's saying, what I'm saying it is one thing. Doing it is another. And that's exactly right. You're you that couldn't be any more truer. But that's why I'm asking for a second chance. Right. This is my first revocation, so I'm asking for another chance, please. I don't know how many how many chances you think you get. Because I, this court is of the opinion that when you were placed on an outright probation at time of sentencing, that was your chance. There is no magic number of times you get to come back. Does order um, the court at this time orders Ms. Williams to the custody of the Butler County Sheriff's Office until she can be no. taken to the jail to serve the remaining balance of her sentence. Ms. Williams, you want to who, who's with you, Ms. Williams, is a very fair man. If I would suggest to him that you be allowed to make a phone call to perhaps set up substitute care or to let someone know what your situation is, mm -hmm. I think he will accommodate that. Because I think under that situation, you should be allowed to make a call and let someone know what your situation is, which is please. essentially long-term incarceration. Please, okay. Mr. Ricky, please consider house arrest, please. I've considered it. I reject the notion that, that your request is rejected. Your request is rejected. Yo, Mr. Favre, what are you doing? Help me. Mr. Ricky, please. Normally, I'm addressed as judge. Or your I'm sorry, person. Your Honor. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. I'm just freaking out. Please consider house arrest. Please. Judge, I'm begging I, you. Judge, right. I, will. I, just, I just, Victoria, I just wish that please. you would have taken this case as seriously before as you apparently do now. Duration does impact more than just her. Um, and we asked the court to consider allowing her house arrest or a modification of sentence of some kind. Um, she has, she does have a lot of things in the fire, despite her lack of progress. She does have a lot of irons in the fire in her life. I do understand your request, Mr. Favre, and and I have no doubt that everything you're saying is true. Please, but when you have those kind of stakes involving other people in your life, I would think that you would take your probation even more seriously than someone who doesn't have those responsibilities. Please. Victoria only today takes please. her probation seriously. No, Your Honor, I swear to you, uh, please, please. I understand Mr. Favre's request. Uh, please. And your advocacy on your client's behalf, but please. Um, the court please. is not going to change his previous order. No, please, Ricky, please. Please don't make me do it. Please, All you'll right. die. Nothing you say is, is going to change my order.